Okay. Good evening, everyone. Um, Chuck Mardler? Yep, present. Marty Wolpoff? Present. Rosemary Ginty? Present. Dan Patternack? Present. Sylvia Alexander? Present. Bob Bender? Here. Paul Ellis? Present. David Gelman? Tracy Pardo? Julie Reyes? Present. Camelia Tepulis? Present. Omar Murray? And Nick Fazio? You have a quorum? Okay, we have a quorum, and David is just coming in from the waiting room. Okay. Um, I would like to do, with your permission, something a little different with the first item on the agenda. It has been on the agenda twice previously. It is the Orloff Avenue BSA. Um, and a suggestion was made by somebody who is extremely knowledgeable, not me, um, that there may be people here who have problems with the Orloff application, but are not opposed to it per se. So what I would like to do is two things. <clears throat> I'd like to get a sense of what concerns people have, and if there are such concerns, and then take a vote or get the sense of the meeting on a different aspect, namely the possibility of conditional approval if a majority of you really do favor having this in principle, a conditional approval subject to um, the conditions uh, that are causing you a problem being met. Now, I'm not sure that I'm right in the statement that a majority of you uh, are disposed favorably to this application. Um, let me tell you, I have two problems that are three really. One, I don't understand why this was turned into a glorified railroad flat um, rather than two separate buildings, which could have been done. When wow. the people bought this, that was obvious. They didn't need that garage. And I'll bet you that garage ain't going to be a garage very long. Yeah. Um, the second part of that, the second part of that is I have a real problem. I'll guarantee you within hours, indeed, before anything else happens, the basement will become a basement flat and it'll become an illegal multiple dwelling. Now, I, I understand that people do not want to go after people who have moved into one of those already or are already uh, committed to that course of conduct, though illegal. Um, but it does seem to me that when you know this is going to be an illegal multiple dwelling, um, that gives me a problem. So I'd like to get your sentiment from those who have a view concerning this item, please. Anybody? Dan. Hey, Chuck. I think one of the biggest problems I have is just the amount of that brick wall or the size of that brick wall running on Orloff Avenue um, and to see if the applicant can break it up at all, whether it's by moving entrances over there or, or, or doing something else design-wise to break up just that big wall, um, just because I, I, I think it does does take away from a lot of the other single family houses in the area. That would be my concern on the project. Do you have a view as to whether you would approve it on condition that that be done? Well, that will really kill the uh, plan though. If we could approve on condition that they break it up somehow, you know, figure out, and again, it's a design issue. And I, I, I have confident in architects these days that they could figure out a design to, to accommodate the, the developer where they can still construct the two family house that they want and break it up just a little bit to, to conform a little bit to the single family houses that are in that area. Okay. Kristen. Hey, Chuck. 
Long time. Hi, ago. how are you? It's I'm been good. A while. Been a while. Um, I guess uh, apologies. I'm sure this has already been addressed, but can you just can someone just give an uh, like a very high level overview of exactly what kind of variance is being requested here? Like what if you go through the variance book and you check everyone that is sought, you'll have done the job. <laughs> there are very few variances available that are not being sorted. That's so there's not, a lot of, so there's a lot that they're, because it's a tiny little lot. So within the zoning, they're not allowed to do much is basically what you're saying. No, it's a very narrow lot on top of the size. Yeah. So are they required to have a, so they're required to only develop a certain percentage of the lot, I guess, is basically that's what I'm trying to. No, 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 no. What the problem that they have here is that the lot is very narrow. And as a result, they have to build, if they're going to occupy the entire lot or get maximum value out of it, they're going to have to do a very comparatively thin thing. When they first came here, it was with an application to have no hallway. In order to get to bedroom number two, you had to go through bedroom number one, a typical railroad flat construction. We have the great expert on all of those housing issues. Mr. Weissman's with us now. Good evening, Ted. Um, it was a typical railroad flat. Um, we raised hell and they have pulled off and have put in a very narrow hallway running across the length of it. Um, it is still the same thing, except you've got the minimum amount, legally permissible amount of a hallway running the length of it. Um, you have a area in the backyard where they're gonna park one car. And then along the side, there's a supposed, uh, they claim garage for the second car. Um, that, that doesn't really make a heck of a lot of sense. You could have broken this up into two small one family homes. Um, or as Dan says, done something to relieve the monotony from the standpoint of the character of the neighborhood um, of a solid brick wall. Um, and the third problem was they have a staircase going out from the basement directly out to the street. Now, you know, and I know that's going to be an apartment rented as an apartment day one. Rosemary, you are uh, uh, any more, Kristen? I'm sorry. You're on, Rosemary. Can, uh, can I ask uh, Kira? Kira, can you pull up the um, material that um, uh, the Boris Tanison appeals material? I really, um, this is the third time this has been here, and it is next to impossible to for me to explain what my issue is, as simple as it may be, without a picture. Picture is worth a thousand words. Can you do that, Kira? Whoop, she's muted. Kira? Kira, come out, come I'm out. I'm here, I'm will. here. <laughs> um, can you pull I'm up? I'm pulling it up now. Yeah, thank I'm working you. on it. Go to, number, go, to, go to number 16, please. All right, it should be coming up. Maybe. Okay, now go to the seventh drawing. That's the first drawing. Go to drawing number seven. Okay. Uh, there you go, that's it, that's it. That's my problem. Okay, this lot, this building, what you're, what you're looking at here is 70 feet long. That's a 70 foot, undifferentiated plain vanilla wall. Uh, uh, Kristen was asking what is the very, the variance you're looking at here is the lot is so narrow, they're not able to put in a side yard. Now that you're looking at Orloff Avenue, if you're on Orloff, this is what you're gonna be looking at. Um, uh, and there is zero yard. They're required to have 10 foot, it is zero. So this 70 foot wall, is right smack in your face on Orloff, right up to the sidewalk. 
Um, I, I have a problem with that. I have a problem with looking at this. It looks like a chicken farm, to tell you the truth. Um, <laughs> the, um, I, I then looked at, and it's in the application, you all, you all saw it, there are different maps, there are Bromley maps and what have you. And when you look at the single family homes in this neighborhood, they are on lots. Uh, so for instance, on Cannon, the lots are 27 feet, 25 feet, 25, 22 feet, 24 feet. That's the size of the lot. The house is smaller than that, okay? So the houses are 20 feet, 21 feet. This is 70 feet with no imagination whatsoever. Um, and th that's, that is my problem. There's no relief, there's, there's no variation. And I, it, we shouldn't be designing their building, but when I look at something, there's something wrong with 70 foot brick wall in this neighborhood. So I will stop, I, I, and I would like to see that as a condition. I would like to see a condition that the Board of Standards and Appeals looks at this and says, you have to do something with that facade. It is massive, it is undifferentiated, it doesn't, is, is not respectful to the single family homes that are in that neighborhood. When you walk those streets, it's a pleasure to walk those streets. You got yards and, and, and doors and, it, 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 and it's, 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 it's nice small houses. This does not fit the character of the single family home neighborhood that this is being built in. Um, I think that's, all I have to say, thank Kira, thank you for pulling this up. Um, thank you for your patience. Okay. It takes no, me a no, second no. sometimes to upload it, but thank you. Okay, thank, thank you. Okay, so, 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 so Chuck, to answer your question, I am in favor of residential use here. I'm in favor of the low density. My single problem is with that massive 70 foot wall with no imagination whatsoever in this uh, in an area where there are apartment buildings, but you can't compare this building with an apartment building. You have to compare this building with the single family homes in that neighborhood. Right. And it doesn't blend with them. It doesn't go along. Thank you. I will stop. Thank you. I'll bend it. Thank you, Chuck. Um, uh, let, me, let me start by saying where I'm coming from. I'm prepared to vote in favor of this building right now without preconditions. Uh, but depending on what the conditions are, I'm, I'm certainly open to, um, you know, to considering them and voting. Uh, the, um, th there are some very nice uh, one and two family homes in the area. There are also a lot of high rise apartment buildings in the area. I've walked that area. I know that area. And um, as far as the, the um, as far as the uh, conditions and the question of compatibility, I think depending on your point of view, you can interpret it almost any way you want. Um, but it's certainly not incompatible with the high rise apartment buildings that are in the area. There's, we did see uh, drawings of one other building that has a, a large brick facade, uh, which is recessed in the middle. And, you know, uh, I, I guess we're we're becoming the aesthetic police. If some people think that looks better than having a lot of windows on the side of the building, so be it. Uh, but you know that's that's not uh, to my taste. But again, I don't know that we're the aesthetic police in the first place. Um, with regard to whether the basement will become a you know a third uh, dwelling unit, um, that would put this building pretty much in line with every other two family building that I'm aware of in North Riverdale. I can't speak for Kingsbridge Heights, but I can tell you on my own block, there are mm. two, two family buildings, all of which have three dwelling units, three mailboxes, three gas meters, three doors, and the building's department says, well, we can't get entry to the building. So, you know, we can't really tell what's going on there. Um, but you know, uh, I, I hope it doesn't happen. The CFO, CFO uh, doesn't allow it to be a, a three-unit dwelling. Uh, we'll have to see what happens when it's actually built. Uh, the, the last point. The last. Point, let me just make one more point, Chuck. Um, if we were overruled on the Marble Hill unit, uh, which I felt, you know, we were on strong grounds to object to it even after it was altered. But on this building, the, the developer has come back to us twice and he has made some 
changes to it. I don't think the drawing we just saw was actually the final version of that facade, but be that as it may, he has come back. He's been cooperative. He's, he's tried to uh, you know, meet our objections, but if we were overruled in Marble Hill, I don't have the slightest doubt we're going to be overruled by the BSA on this one if we vote against it. And, you know, I, I can't speak for my colleagues, but this is not the hill I'm prepared to die on. So, uh, you know, as I say, I'm, I'm prepared to vote for it without conditions, depending on what the conditions are, uh, I might still be willing to vote for it. And thank you for giving me the time. Let me just tell you what the significance is, aimed particularly at those who uh, are not familiar with the building code. Uh, the building department is not acting properly. Um, during the period of time that I served as commissioner of buildings, we went after these and there's a reason for them. And the excuse I couldn't get access is nonsense. It is maybe I, they should have had done what I asked 60 years ago, put them all in green uniforms with no pockets and then you'd have access all of a sudden. But the answer here is, and the problem is the following. A multiple dwelling has different fire code and building code regulations than a non-multiple. And if you have people living, especially in a basement area, where you do not have the fire protection that you would have if it were a multiple dwelling, you increase the risk of fires and death which is exactly what was happening at that time. We went after them. This area was one of the areas that were in the, in the loop. I had occasion just a few weeks ago, you just look at something and there it was. We nailed a ton of places. We gave the people a year to fix it or do something because we weren't out to hurt them. But what was happening was really bad. And if you will check the basement apartments were where people in Hurricane Ida and some of the other like storms were killed recently. So you have a serious hazard. It's not a matter of it isn't nice. It isn't a matter of appearance. It's a matter of safety. It really is an important consideration, especially when it's as close as this one is to the building next door. But I, uh, Ms. Tepolis, Uh, yes, thank you. Just to say that um, I hear you loud and clear on the matter of uh, fire safety, but they did come back to us very clearly explaining that that's a, a requirement to have another exit at the basement. I think uh, Bob Bender's, I, I fully endorse and I could have stated Bob Bender's position 100%. I mean, they, they really tried to work with us. They came to us twice with revised designs. We are not the sort of aesthetics police here to say that a brick wall is uglier than it would have been a, I don't know, gray concrete, or uh, also two stories high, you know, wall of the same length. I, 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 I see no reasons to, to stand against this. I mean, again, it's overwhelming the, a little bit the, the number of variances they are seeking, but we knew that this was gonna happen no matter what, given the, the sort of the geographic um, situation of the lot itself, I have not, I have nothing that I can raise against them. And just as a personal plea, if I may share, how to say, in the way we phrase things, we cannot presume people guilty before innocent. I mean, we cannot say, I know this will be an illegal apartment. Maybe that is the case on a statistical basis, but I find this to be a little bit sort of aggressive in the way of expressing to say, I accuse you because I know better. I mean, we presume innocent before guilty and let the DOB enforce what they have to enforce. So I'm, I'm aligning with Bob Bender's position at this moment. I would approve this. I would also be willing to absolutely approve any conditions any other members um, are raising to this. Anyone else? All right. Uh, can I, and this is not a recordable vote, please. Um, I just want to get a sense of the meeting. Would those who want it done on condition as contrasted with a vote that's just up and down, that's only the board members, please raise your hand. What are the conditions? Oh, you're absolutely right, Bob. 
Uh, as far as I am concerned, you can strip away all but the safety as far as I'm concerned. I am concerned about the basement for the reasons I've told you. Yes, there are apartments all over the area. That doesn't make it right. The first person that dies, I'm going to come see you. Okay. Um, that's that's not appropriate for me to have said that. Um, um, that's one. The other condition that was mentioned was Rosemary's about the solid brick wall. And the third condition that was mentioned in both of the prior meetings was the garage, which just didn't make any sense there as a garage. Am I correct? Is that the view? Is there anybody who feels, I don't remember who raised the garage issue. So is that anybody here who has a problem with the garage? Okay, so we can drop that. So you don't. Yeah, I, I, I had a, I'm sorry, Chuck. I, I had a problem with the garage. Again, I, I can't figure out um, what the, the purpose is. I think you'll find this is it, 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 Mr. Chair. But if I could just uh, jump in, the no. garage was raised, and uh, uh, Kira, you you received notification. I think it's in the notification that went to everybody uh, that um, it is the applicant's position that the garage is there because there is a section of the zoning resolution that will grant an additional 300 square feet of residential floor area to their residential building if they build an enclosed garage. Uh, I looked it up. I was astonished to see it in the zoning resolution. It is there. It's not considered a bonus. It's in there for other reasons, which I won't go into. But this is the problem that I have with that excuse about the garage. If you look at their zoning analysis, it's not ours, it's theirs, that they are presenting to the Board of Stands and Appeals. The permitted floor area ratio is 1.02. The proposed floor area ratio is 0 0.87. They are 15% below what they're allowed to build. They don't need the 300 square feet of um, extra floor area from the garage. So that is a red herring of an issue to say we need the garage for the 300 square feet. And I'm not really not happy that that was given to us as an issue. Um, uh, look at the floor area, look at what's permitted, look at what's proposed. They do not need that 300 square feet. So the garage was raised for a number of reasons, but. Kira, am I correct? They wrote, and, and the, I don't want to say excuse, but the explanation they give for the garage is that they got 300 square feet extra uh, uh, residential floor area. And yeah. that's just, it's, a, again, a red herring of an issue. A red herring of an issue. Okay. Yes, and I, so, and I did send that email out to the committee today. You did. You yeah. 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 Needs it again, mm -hmm. please let me know. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Julie. No, thank, thank you for sending it, Kira. Thank you. Julie? Yes, thanks, Chuck. I, I just had a question going back to the seller. Um, I hear your objections, but my question is, they are going to have two exits from the seller. Is that correct? Or is that a condition? Uh, as far as I know, they there was mention of it. I hadn't seen it on the plans. But there was mention that, that made that they would have an interior entrance uh, stairs, which just adds. Why do you need it going out to the street? Answer: So do you see? Well, the email that I, I read in regards to the seller, it, it stated that they will have two exits from the seller. From the seller. You you have to have that when you have people. Right. So. So my, my, my question to you is, what is your objection with the, I thought you had an objection with the seller. No, the problem with, oh, okay. basement, the, problem with the basement is it mm -hmm. makes it a multiple dwelling. When it mm -hmm. is a multiple dwelling, there are requirements up and down the aisle in terms right. of how they right. build. I got that. And they're not going to be compliant. Then. The issues with respect to um, the walls and the light. Mm -hmm. 
can I go on to the next one, Julie? Yeah, yeah, but I know that they are one family houses with, with basements. Oh, sure. But the problem, yeah. look, let me state it to you. I'm I trying to understand you a wager. so I can. I, I will make you a wager that there are a significant percentage of the one family houses in North Riverdale, for example, are. In the Bronx, 90%. I know that. <laughs> okay. But they're different in different areas. But in, yeah, uh, my point is that what here we know what's going to be going in, and we're turning a blind eye to it. That's all. Nick, Nick, oh, thank you. Yeah, no, thanks again. I just wanted to um, reiterate. Uh, I was multitasking, and um, but I appreciate. I, I too, I, I looked up, I saw the email regarding the garage and what the uh, the citation of the zoning resolution. And um, again, I, I just, as much as I have researched this, I still can't figure out uh, why that was a, um, a deal breaker because the Mr. Dale indicated that there was no way that he was gonna negotiate on the garage. And, mm -hmm. and again, I just don't see why he's making such a big deal about that. And I do think, although I don't love the design, um, I agree with Bob uh, that, that we aren't the aesthetic police, but I think that eliminating that garage would create more open space. And even though it wouldn't break up the housing per se, it would still cut down on sort of the, uh, the, the that brick uh, moving on, on the left-hand side if you're moving. If you're moving, if you're driving south or walking south, so. David Gum. Uh, yeah, <clears throat> yes, I'm trying to understand this garage issue as well, um, because if if the uh, developer thinks that, you know, he, uh, like many other uh, Bronx sites, um, any renter would like to have off-street parking in the garage. I, I sort of understand that, you know, I, I, I understand the hesitation about the illogic of <clears throat> getting additional FA under the uh, FAR, but um, whatever it is they're trying to do for whatever reason, uh, the garage itself actually, as, as Nick was uh, sort of alluding to, is that uh, the garage is actually more proportional, independent, and looking more like the house adjacent to the, I guess, the right. Um, and I would think the neighbors would prefer that there'd be, um, you know, uh, fewer cars competing for street spots. Um, you know, and, and what it is right now, and probably has been for, looks like generations, is uh, empty and ugly. So, just a few thoughts. It's mine. Out. Hello? Chuck, you're muted. That you ever happened to you that I was muted. Uh, David, anything else? Actually, yeah. What what are the the extras uh, they're trying to achieve by way of variance? Because the, the variance is what gives us a degree of um, leverage. Non they they don't have a front yard. They don't have requisite side yard on one side because it's a corner house. Um, they have a bunch of others that I can't remember offhand, but. It was a fair statement when I said you'd name it and they've probably got it. That they're requesting for variances that right. they don't need a front yard, they don't need this, they don't need that. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Because they can't meet them, they can't comply with it. Sylvia, is your hand up? No. Okay. Is there anybody else? else no all right now so could you give me a, a feeling that are on the table and we would if you want to go with conditions we'll go with them one by one Otherwise, Chuck, i do I'm see happy. a hand up 
There is a hand up from, from one of the neighbors, I think Rena Dawson. Oh, 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 I am so sorry. Hard to see in the background. Where are you? Probably your upper left. That's funny, I do not see her. Rena? All right. Ms. Dawson, do you have your hand up? She's not muted, but we can't. Hello, Ms. Dawson, are you there? I think we're going to have to go by that. All right. Uh, would you folks who are board members please indicate to me, and this is not a recordable vote, but just so we have make this short and sweet, uh, conditional or straight up and down? Those who would like to have it conditional, will you please raise your hand and then we'll vote separately on the three conditions, Bob. I think that'll enable you to add. All right. All those who would like to have it unconditional. Do we have, am I alone? Okay, I guess I see am. Oh, Chuck, we have hands up. Rosemary, David, Dan, Sylvia, Camelia, Paul, Marty, Bob, Bender. Is that I'm sorry, is this conditional or unconditional? I'm, I'm not sure. conditional. Count me. Okay. And Julie Reyes. All right. So I is that is that a let me have the hands for the unconditional, please. That's a straight up and down. Okay, give me let them get uh lower their hand. I saw Sylvia's hand up. Sylvia, was that for? No, it's down. Okay. Are there any hands for unconditional? How many? I don't see any. Okay. I have to ask all of you to please forgive me. I'm a little punchy. I just got off a plane that's been traveling for the last 12 hours. So I'm a little tired. Um, all right, now the three conditions, and if we can quickly do the hands, yes, I want it as a condition. No, I don't. First one is yes, the basement. Can you be explicit, Chuck? Yes, to require that they remove the exit to the basement that goes to the street so it cannot readily be used as a three apartment facility, a multiple dwelling. It's that, it's, look, if there weren't a basement apartment, you'd have to go, I mean, if there weren't staircase that goes right out to the street, you would have to go through the building and through a good chunk of somebody's apartment in order to get downstairs. That would not make it a very saleable uh, illegal three. And my view is, I can't, I can't see my way clear to supporting just giving a blind eye to what I know is going to be an illegal three. Chuck, my my recollection is that the presenter said that he was required to have an exit outside. Do that's you know not, about that? That's not true. That's just not true. Well, right, well on the assumption that it's not true, I would vote for it. But that's the assumption. Bob, I can assure you it's not. Okay. So, Chuck, is it possible to put in there assuming that it's not required under the building or fire? Yeah, code? I'll change it. Assuming it is not required under the building code, I'll put that in. That's a good point. Well, well put, stated. Done. Okay. But how is he going to build his meth lab? <laughs> okay. All right. Is Do I have a majority on that or do I not? Are there enough people along for that one? Chuck, Chuck, I just have a question in regards to the basement. Are there windows in the basement? Or? Yes, I'm if sorry, you looked I, at what she had, if you looked at the picture that Rosemary had up, 
I saw mm -hmm. at least two or three on that side alone. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. So then I'm good with the conditions. All right. Okay. Thank okay. you. The second condition is the solid brick wall as it impacts the requirement under 7221 of the zoning resolution that says um, it may not adversely affect the character of the neighborhood. So hands up for those who want that as a condition. Well, just as a clarification, it's not yeah. a solid brick wall. It has windows. Oh, you're right. Yeah. You're right. Yeah. It is, all right. Yeah, I'm thinking about I'll, to, I'll, I'll phrase the language carefully if it's done, but it may not get done. So let's see, those who are in favor of that as a condition, please, would you raise your hands? And, and that it's, and the condition being that the developer would work, you know, to, to work, work on the design. The, work on a design to provide some relief from undifferentiated uh, Wall space effect. Seven seventy foot long wall. Yes, with no yard, with zero yard. Yep. Mm -hmm. All he needs to do is put in some verticality every sure. twenty or thirty feet. Sure. Well, this is like just to see that Bob Bender said we're not the design police. Indeed, we're not, but we do care about community character. I, I think it should be worded that the board stands and appeal should take into consideration. Let them figure out the design. We're presenting the issue. We're presenting okay. the problem, not the solution. We're presenting the problem mm -hmm. um, uh, for the community. That, that's my view I'll, of it. I'll so. draft the language tomorrow and I'll run it by you. And Bob, if you want to see it, I'm happy to run it by you or anybody else. So I'm, I'm not a board passes. member, but I do just want to remind everyone that this is a, a National Historic District neighborhood that the we have fought pretty hard to preserve the character of this neighborhood. So. I don't know if that's at all relevant in, in the language here, but we worked really hard on that and, and we do really care about the aesthetics. All right, can we get those who would like to have this as a condition, the brick, the, the brick wall, please raise your hands now. Kira? Yep. Have you got a count? Yep. Um, Marty, Dan, Rosemary, Sylvia, David, Paul, Julie. And That's presumably Chuck. Seven yeah. and Chuck, so eight. Okay. The third, that one passes, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. I think what I'll do is I'll draft the language and send it around to the entire group that was here tonight so that nobody thinks I missed anything and I'll take whatever changes you want, all right? And, and Chuck, just a, a reminder, a friendly reminder, tomorrow is the board meeting. So we will need that resolution. When is it, uh, when's the board meeting? Tomorrow night at seven. I'm not sure I can say, I know I don't have the gas to work on it tonight. Okay. I'll do Understood. the best I can. Um, garage. Should we do the hands again? Those who want the garage out. Could you specify the condition, please? The condition is that they replace the garage. With? Nothing. You don't need the, the question is whether the garage is needed there. <clears throat> One of the issues was, is this going to stay a garage? Chuck, we have uh, four hands up for that. Okay. Oops, uh, wait a minute. Doesn't go up. Or three, rather. Okay. So there are two conditions, stairs <laughs> and solid brick wall. Okay. I will try and get something to you tomorrow before lunch, but I can't promise, okay? Um, now, let me move on. Um, okay. Uh, let me move on to something before we go to the 50th precinct. Um, there are, during the time I was away, two bills or two measures that um, I have not read either of them yet. 
but both of them fall squarely in the ballywick of this committee. One is Governor Hochul has apparently proposed a bill that would have some negative impact on single family homes. Um, if it is anything like the press account of it that I read the blurb from the New York Times while I was abroad, um, that raises a question in my mind as to whether or not it's good. Um, what I would like to do is appoint a committee to go over both of those bills and report at the next land use committee meeting. Um, and let me tell you that uh, the handcuff volunteer on that one is Rosemary, of course. It'll be Rosemary, Julie, and myself. Um, if, is there anyone who has a background in either um, housing or in um, building code? Okay, so that's that committee. The second committee is, I promised that we would appoint three people to serve as a committee to serve as an interface between the community board and STAG on Riverdale Avenue. Um, and I am going to do just that now. Um, I've asked Marty to be the hand, handcuff chair of that committee. David Gelman and Julie Reyes. Oh, whoop, 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 whoop. Let me back up. Let me back up. I just screwed up. That's why I'm so tired. The Hochul and the other bill is David Gelman, Julie Reyes, and Marty Wolpoff. This committee is uh, Mr. Gothel, who lives next door uh, with an apartment right there. So he's been watching and monitoring it anyway. Uh, David Gelman and Marty Wolpoff. Okay. If there's anybody who would like to work with them, fine. The chair of the board and the chair of the committee will be available to work with the committee as well, uh, ex officio or whatever. Are but, these in fact committees or working groups? These, the subcommittee, working group, whatever you want, David. It's people who are going to watch this. This is going to be a project for the next year. As they go through it, it'll get worse. Wait till you get the calls about if they're working all night. All right? No, I, I'm fine. I just thought there were a lot more rules about uh, putting together a com committee or a subcommittee versus just a working It's a task working group. group. It's a working group. The only reason I hedged on it is one member, David, is not a member of the board. It's got help. And that's uh, why I was hedging on what it was going to be called. It hasn't stopped other chairs. I'll su suffice it to say. Whatever. Um, where am I? Now, the next item on the agenda is public design commissions for the 50th precinct, uh, a request for a letter of no objection to a proposed change in the 5.0 exterior work modifying the asphalt with ADA requirements and replacing the existing door. Uh, is there anybody who has any problem with that? Is there somebody here from the 5-0 or from- uh... Chuck, their representative is here, Kim Wood, and she's sharing her screen now to give you guys a brief okay. presentation on the proposal. Yeah, perfect. Thank you, Kiara. Um, and thank you everyone for having us on your agenda. I'm Kim Wood, I'm with Space Myth and Architecture Office. Uh, Kiara, the district manager, of course, who you know, she invited us to attend this land use meeting so we could share the proposed work that we're looking to do at the NYPD 50th precinct. Um, we're part of the design team that was tasked by the NYPD to take the necessary steps to bring the precinct up to some ADA code requirements for accessibility. So the piece that we want to put in front of you today, it's the exterior work to modify the accessible route to the entrance that is accessible. Um, uh, we had an ADA surveyor that went through and noted anything that was not compliant, and we are going through and diligently upgrading it. Uh, one of those items is, and I think I can better demonstrate it by possibly flipping through some of these pages, 
Uh, this pathway here uh, brings you to the side door. I'm happy to go back on any of these images to make this easier, but just to explain, you would go along this path uh, until you come to this door. Uh, what the report noted is that the slope from this door to that, uh, the beginning pictures that I had from the roadside, it didn't meet the slope compliancy. We also have a grate that is not ADA compliant. You, you could um, uh, have a walker or your wheelchair or cane or whatnot could get stuck in the hole. So there's some ADA compliant grates that we can look at. And then in addition, these doors, uh, hopefully you can see my cursor, these doors into the entrance. Uh, there is a code requirement that asks for the bottom panel of the door to actually be 10 inches of a finished smooth surface, and these are eight inches. So what we're looking for is really just to tidy up the asphalt to meet the slope requirement. We're looking to replace the grate with an ADA compliant grate and to replace the doors uh, with one that will meet the code requirement. Um, I can switch back to some of these plans that show up more specifically, but I'd like to show you the rendering that gives you a pretty clear idea of what it'll look like. And it's not that different from today. Surely we haven't showed all the cop cars that live there, but uh, in general, you would have this path. This is where they would be able to come through and then access here. Uh, all of the decisions are really replacing in kind. We're not trying to reinvent anything. We're trying to make it accessible. Is that a great thing? Can you go back one picture? Yeah, of course. What's right here. Yeah. Is that a that, grate? Yeah. So there is a grate there. That's not um, a pathway. So we're not worried about that. But there's actually some equipment that lives uh, sub uh, below ground there. And on the so, side, on the side yes. of the building. Yes, correct. Mm -hmm. Right here, right here. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, here? Yeah. Yes, there is a grate there. Is that essential? The reason I'm asking is you were right about the walker and you were right about the um, uh, wheelchair getting stuck. Somebody with the walker ain't gonna make it. I've, I've become somewhat expert in that area. So I can show you, um, I pause my share for a second. So this is Google. Maps, of course, you know, we're very technical here. <laughs> um, yeah, you can see the, the grade that exists here and it certainly is along the path. So just looking at ADA grades that are built to be compliant, I don't have anything drawn in so specifically, but just to demonstrate what we would be looking at, um, of course, all of the openings, they're within, you know, certain margins to ensure that though there is the, the airflow that's required for the equipment below it, but there isn't, um, uh, you know, the concern about the open grates that we see throughout New York City, of course. It's, it's not uh, nearly as much of a trap for wheelchairs, canes, et cetera. So this would be the sort of thing that we would recommend to replace that with. Anyone? Um, Really quickly, I can show you, we've drafted up this letter of no objection. It's actually been addressed to Kiara. I'm not sure if that's not correct, but it's it's stating basically what I've laid out today and what Kiara added in the agenda. Um, and again, our request is for a letter of no objection. Um, what we would do is take that letter and the next step that we have to do to be up to be approved for this work before getting building permits is uh, we would go to the Public Design Commission. Would so you, this is the first step you, of several. Would you do this for me, please? Mm -hmm. You amend that letter mm -hmm. on the screen now mm -hmm. to have a reference to the fact that those grates that will remain will mm -hmm. be ones that do not trap wheelchairs, walkers, and the like. Sure. All right. And if you will get that, then the question is, is oh, I have others. Uh, Dan. Um. Yes, Ms. Wood, just uh, two quick questions. Uh, there seems to be, that's a sidewalk there on, on the side, right? On the Kingsbridge Avenue side. Like it appears and, and like there's, there's a lot of space there, but I think the realistic photograph is really, that's a sidewalk and the cars are really just kind of backed up on the sidewalk. Yes, yes. This is uh, the case of where possibly the NYPD has taken some um, advantage of their ability to park where they want. On the on the Kingsbridge side, and my second question, just so I know, are, are folks, um, and, and I don't believe they are, but if you can just kind of confirm, mm -hmm. cars 
vehicles are not allowed to bring folks up to that entrance, correct? Um, I don't know about their exact policy for, for drop-offs. Um, this, so this is not a thorough fair, you know, again, I'm going yeah. to pull up Google Maps. It's, it's their parking area. Mm -hmm. um, so you can see this is, you know, it does cut through to Broadway, but it's not a public way. Um, Correct. So I guess my question is, if somebody is, is hopping out in a walker or a wheelchair, mm -hmm. they're going to have to just, uh, I guess, walk down that area to the back door, right? Oh, I'm, I follow what you're saying. Yes, yeah, it, it would be preferable that they be dropped off over here, I guess, in that case. Um, that is an interesting point. So right now, do we, we don't know what they're doing. They're just sort of getting dropped off anywhere. So I don't know where they use for the drop off. What I can say is the main entrance is over here. Yep. Uh, and so, if they did drop them off here, they would have to come around to this entrance. The, the I guess what I'm trying to figure out is if somebody who, who needs a walk or needs a wheelchair comes to the 50th precinct, I'm guessing that they're not walking down that alley up front. No, I would think that you would drop them off here and they would come up. But I mean, I do understand your point. However, you know, as I'm sure you know, with the ramp requirements for slopes, mm -hmm. um, it wouldn't be able to, you know, it's not going to be right next to the door. It's not a huge yeah. change in elevation. I think it's, I think it was like six, six and a half inches of difference, give or take, mm -hmm. that we were looking to achieve. And so, you know, that ends up being panned over, you know, six and a half feet or whatnot for one to 12, right? So mm -hmm. I think we had it since it was already feathered from, you know, give or take this point. We continued the feathering of it. I, I shouldn't say that the slope starts at the edge of this building. Hopefully you can see my cursor. Um, mm -hmm. I can confirm that. I do think it starts closer to this grate. And no possibility for a ramp in the front of the building, right? That wasn't a discussion that at all. we were in the position to have. So I don't have an answer for that. Only that gotcha. is one of the directions we were tasked with. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you, Ms. Wood. I appreciate it. Yeah, of course, thanks. David. So, sorry about that. Sorry about that. Uh, thank you. Um, this is not a political statement of, of defund or anything like that. But can we uh, knock down the building and start all over? It is the obvious <laughs> precinct within the five boroughs? When you look at the 40th precinct, the 44th precinct, the uh, old uh, one police plaza, and uh, the original first precinct, some of the nicest architecture in all of the city of New York. And we have got easily the ugliest precinct house in the five boroughs. I'd love to see it knocked down uh, and, uh, you know, an architect apply to it. And you know what? Create some parking underneath because all the parking for blocks around is taken up by uh, patrol cars, uh, vans, and uh, personal commuter vehicles. That aside, that's a political argument, another argument for another day. Um, <laughs> sort of following on with what Dan was talking about. So the uh, the main entrance is at 236th Street and Kingsbridge. Um, so what you're really talking about is providing um, ADA access for the cops uh, and for all the other sub agencies that share that building in the back. Correct, and that, um, that is how it is set up right now. It's right, not and I, I think that's a mistake. Perfect. I think it's wrong for us to approach a project like this where we don't make it um, quite clear, quite easy for um, our residents to get into their precinct house. If we think there's a problem with the main entrance, let's fix it. I, I think that this project is, um, you know, it may have merit for the employees that use that rear entrance, uh, I'm willing to trust that, but I don't think we should go forward with it without addressing the front door, which is what our uh, neighbors uh, get to see. All right, let's see where that one goes. Um, may, I, may I say something? Sure. I'm sorry. This is Carlos Adrian with your architects. I'm working with Kim. Uh, 
just uh, in, in other projects, we had similar situations where we, to resolve them, we added uh, an intercom uh, in the intra entrance, main entrance uh, or side entrance to, uh, to call the police officer and, and meet whoever needs to use the side entrance and take them, escort them uh, uh, into, the, into the site, into the side yard or, or like driveway. And that take doesn't make any sense. That's 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 one of the solutions I've seen uh, in other precincts. But under ADA, if you're going to make a big change, you got to do it right. Right, right. The intercom is not right. It it well uh, yes, yeah, like like Kim said, we're, we we are uh, uh, we just tasked with doing this by the NYPD. Uh, it, ADA does allow to have an intercom to you know to ask uh, for assistance. So we go by, we're just going by what we were tasked and, and by, by what the ADA is allowing, is allowing us to, to do. Exactly, yeah. You know, what we are proposing is within compliancy for the code. I can certainly understand what else you're expressing. And unfortunately, that's not something that we can really uh, hit on at this. We, we aren't the right people for that conversation. As members of the community board, I would say that you're right uh, to the letter of the law, but certainly not to the spirit. Um, Judy Colon. Hi there. Um, it's a, kind of apropos because a new business I did want to talk about um, a kind of accessibility for meetings, but um, you may not be the right people, but I totally agree, you know, to that it wasn't looked at to see if there could be a ramp on the side of the building that's on the where the other grate was that could bring you up far enough to the level of the stairs at the main entrance you know coming in and seeing the desk sergeant is very difficult at this point because those stairs are kind of rough to navigate um so who would be the right person to um to address that because i agree with what the rest of the board has been saying is about an equivalent experience um if it can be offered and i don't think it was even it doesn't sound like it was even explored oh, right yeah i i can't speak to that at the role that we have been played in it any of the prior discussions or discovery as it's i'm not aware of it unfortunately um uh adrian i don't know what we would recommend as far as talking to the right people to discuss it because i'm sure it's a much bigger conversation yes i mean uh, we'll bring it up to our clients in like uh, why don't we do this yeah. um do you have any immediate need that this cannot go over to the next meeting uh, uh asking we... us chuck i think uh, karen wanted to chime in Oh, I know. She's next. Karen? Okay, sorry. Karen, you're muted or not? Uh, you Now you're muted. Good. Karen, you're on. I'm one of those with disabled, and I have come with a walker. I drive through the back entrance to get into the police department, even if I'm making a donation of coats during the winter, um, uh, I get a growly face from the police officers because I should not be driving down that alleyway behind the building, but I cannot get up the stairs, obviously. So I certainly appreciate any way that we can make the police department's uh, offices more accessible. Okay. Um, is there any objection from the committee to my laying this matter over to the next meeting with the request to the representatives of the department that they communicate with the 5 L our concern as to why there has not been, or we have not received a report as to what, whether there has been in the result of examination of a possible ramp in lieu of all this. I think it's a good the idea, Chuck. Not adequate. There are multiple steps there. It's uh, it would have to be a very long and steep ramp. Okay. In my opinion. 
All right, now let me just see if, uh, is there anybody who has not spoken? I see a hand, who is it, David? David, is your hand up? Okay, come on. Amelia is also, hand is up. Okay, David. No, 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 it was just a thumbs up on your suggestion. Okay, so who, who else is there? Camellia. Oh, yes, Camellia. Yes, thank you. Just wanted to highlight how to say the accessibility is a key thing, obviously. But I mean, these people were commissioned by PD to do the section of the project that they're presenting in front of us. So that's what they are limited to designing and they designed and they present in front of us. Um, it sounded to me like David's suggestion would be an amazing suggestion for a capital project for PD to consider in the future. But let's help them do what they come here to do. I mean, I'm supporting your decision and proposal to call them back, but I think that they will come back with exactly what they have today in front of us. So just wanted to add that. Um, I'm going to lay this over to the next meeting. Um, Kira, let's uh, also send a letter to the uh, 5 and to the uh, Department of Design uh, making the point, all right? Chuck? As to why, as to why it was laid over. Okay. Yeah, I think we should highlight the fact that we are very disappointed that it doesn't address at all uh, access for members of the community. Okay. Got it, Kira? Kira? Got it. Okay. So now. Just, sorry, uh, Charles, I'm really quickly, just to make sure I'm understanding the marching orders correctly. So at this point, we're not going to amend the letter that I had flashed earlier. Rather, right. we're going to have this meeting again. And the hope is that we would have more feedback from the NYPD at that time. Correct. Okay. Um, and, and just so you know, um, as of right now, the meeting, uh, the next meeting will be scheduled for April 4th. Okay. Um, yeah, I, I appreciate what everyone said and also you all understanding our position within the limited, you know, what we are able to do and, and where we have influence, of course, on this. Um, we can certainly share your feedback with them. I think, Camelia, I, I appreciated what you said because I'm, I do worry we're going to come back on the fourth and it's, it's not going to be something that we are able to resolve. It's a bigger conversation, but certainly we will try our best um, to respond. So perhaps to Chuck, Ms. Wood can bring someone from the NYPD or DCAS to speak would you, as well. Uh, Kira, would you please do this? Will you please extend an invitation to the captain and ask him that if he thinks there is somebody from the department's um, facilities program that ought to accompany him, that would be appreciated. Absolutely. Yeah, that, that would be great. Someone that could speak more authoritatively on what they're able to do just okay. because our vision is so limited. Okay. Uh, should we mention this tomorrow night when the captain is there? Yeah, that's not a bad idea. Great idea. All right. I will also speak with the captain beforehand just to give him a heads up so we don't spend too much time on it at the 50th report. All right. Um, Thank you. Take Chuck, this, can I make one more we, comment? We recognize your yeah. uh, boundaries. We have just two other quick things. Uh, the minutes of February, um, I assume, have been sent during the course of last week. Does anyone have any comments, objections, or the like? Camelia has her hand up. Yes, Camelia. Yes, if I may, uh, if you wouldn't mind either removing my name from the list of people that approve this or uh, adding me as a abstention. This was approved in the very first minutes of the meeting based on a verbal resolution. I, I reviewed the recording and I was just in the process of logging in. I did not hear this being said, so I didn't vote on it explicitly. It, I mean, it was an implicit vote, but I think my surprise was fairly obvious next day at the full board meeting when I was surprised that this is being discussed since I had attended a nine hour hearing on it. And I also voted in abstention there. So if you wouldn't mind, whatever you consider appropriate, either removing my name from having approved 
this resolution or putting me as an abstention yeah, as put, you put it think. down as an abstention please. thank you okay anything else okay now any new business any old business jo jody is your hand up from before or now Muted. Jody, you're muted. You're muted, Jody. Oh, sorry. Um, I it's kind of both old and new. I just wanted to say how much I have enjoyed being able to attend the meetings over Zoom. Um, as some of you know, I do have a disability that limits my ability to do in person, and so I just wanted to say I'm going to speak tomorrow in the gallery session about um and accessibility beyond wheelchair access for future meetings of hybrid possibilities but in case i don't get my wish i just wanted to say it's been so wonderful to be able to again participate at land use meetings every month instead of only when yes. there's yes. big hearings so yes. thank you so much thank you you are a real champion of the people of the community Chantal. You're muted. You're muted. Oh, hello. Can you hear me? Yep. Thank you. Um, I had emailed Kara about this a few weeks ago, and she mentioned she might put it on the agenda for tonight. It was regarding um, there's actually two large building developments um, for Mar plan for Marble Hill. One of them by your dear friends at Timber Equities, who demolished Villa Rosa Bonheur quite infamously and supposedly didn't have proper permitting. Um, they have filed demolition permits for four uh, small 1910 era built homes in the historic Marble Hill neighborhood, as well as a um, brick building that's currently used as a church. So my concern is just keeping tabs on them and sort of making sure that they obey the proper whatever like lead abatement, asbestos abatement, et cetera. I'm not trying to stop the development, even though I'm not happy about it, because I frankly, long term, I think this little the circular area of Marble Hill should become a historic district because uh, it seems like this and another development that's happening on Terrace View Avenue, that's planned for Terrace View Avenue. There it seems like these um, private equity guys finally have discovered Marble Hill and that they're planning to, you know, take out these historic homes and put up modern buildings, which I'm not happy about. I'm trying to figure out what we can do here. Um, let me think about it. Maybe what we need to do is have a, a, a Marble Hill working group on planning, what it is that we want there, what it is we can do up there. It's a very important issue. You have a new council person who is clearly determined to do everything she can to watch the issues up there. Um, so I think we owe it to her, to you, and to the community to do that. So let me do a little thinking about, upon that, all right? We'll okay. And isn't isn't there a member? I don't see him here tonight. Maybe yes, there is. Chris Calhoun, right? Right. Is that his name? He, yep. I believe he lives in Marble Hill. Yep. And he Oops. would know exactly what Oops. I'm talking about. Let me, let me think upon it and I'll get back to you. Um, this would be a working group, I guess. Okay, right. and just so you know, I've actually been in touch with the Historic Districts, Districts Council and some of the folks there are very interested in Marble Hill. They're familiar with it and they, uh, they seem to be keen on <clears throat> working on getting it landmarked in the future. I am, I am quite certain that you are correct. Thank you, sir. Because you raised it in connection, and then uh, your colleagues had to walk away from that issue. In the interim, I did do some checking. They are interested. Thank you, sir. Anything else? Um, um, yes. May I just say that, um, Chantal, you're welcome to reach out to me. I have actually been monitoring the um, other timber, I just had a chat with Jeff Torkin today, so I would be happy to share some of my tips and tricks on how to keep tabs on the development that is in progress. So um, Kira can give you my contact info if you would like. Okay, thank you. I mean, I'm not an expert on 
like building code violations. So I couldn't, as a lay person, necessarily know that they're violating oh, stuff. Too. Yes, Jody will find it for you. Absolutely, you can. So, um, so just reach out to Kira, and she'll share my phone number and my email, and I'll give you a quick tutorial on what to look out for that they do quite often. Okay, and may I just say one more thing, this other development that's planned for uh, an empty lot, so there's no demolition going on, but there's an empty lot on Terrace View Avenue. Um, most of the roads in Marble Hill are like one way narrow roads. And if we have two huge building projects going on simultaneously, I'm also concerned about not only the insane traffic and the beeping that's gonna cause when people get angry that they're stuck in traffic, but also access accessibility for emergency vehicles, you know, fire trucks and- We ambulance. raised that issue on the Terrace View project. Oh, you and did? Or okay. standards and appeals did not give it much shrift. Okay, so you've already reviewed the terrorist view. Oh, yes. Okay, but not the That, was, that was, I think, perhaps the prime issue. We had photographs of cars parked on the sidewalk up and down block. Listen, people in Marble Hill double park every night. It's insane. And then they just wake up their neighbors by beeping incessantly until the neighbor comes out and moves their car. It drives me nuts, but <laughs> it is what it is. Thank you, Shanta. Thank you. Who is user two? User mm. two has his hand, his or her yes. hand. Marie Claude, local residence, Bailey Avenue. I just want to bring to your attention another demol uh, demolition project in progress, the historic uh, Lutheran Church and its three adjacent parish houses were bought um, in 2021. And they're being taken apart without any listed permits, without anything protecting the uh, the area. But just to bring it up, that this is Bailey Avenue one, Summit Place. Isn't this the one we've already referred to the uh, building department? Yes, yes, it is. Chuck, yes, um, it is. Chuck, may I just? Um, Marie, I actually just emailed you. The Department of Buildings has been out twice and they have not seen any work being done. So they wanna know exactly from your end when you see them out there. Is it weekends? Is it at night? Is it weekdays? If you could just send me an idea of the typical work hours and I'll send it over to GOB to get an inspector out there again. Okay, I will right now. Thank you. Thank you. I will tell you just so that you know. I believe this is the one where I wrote to the commissioner and we got a person out there the next uh, day or the day before uh, or that same day. You are correct, Chuck, but unfortunately no work was being done at that time. So. Is, but I want to say that there is a notice of a violation nailed at the church door, but the, uh, this was yesterday morning when everybody was sleeping, Sunday morning, but I did take pictures and sent them on in a complaint. They were very quickly removing uh, the covering of the roof, the asphalt, bagging them, and then the rain came and they disappeared. But there is already one citation on the door, which they're ignoring completely. Well, the department's been following up. Congratulations to them, and thank you. What can In we any are there any other questions, comments on the motion to adjourn? All those in favor? Contrary minded, done. I thank you all for your courtesy and uh, for tolerating me tonight. Take care. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.